level and the way he works. I mean, you just see it in his demeanor, too, just the way he carries himself and the things he does and leading now. And I think he's going to be a really good player and, and can, can get a lot better. Um, uh, let me ask you about Lamarcus who, Joyner, who's moving to safety. Mm -hmm. and he, it's a position he played in high school, so it's obviously mm -hmm. not a difficult transition for him. Oh, it's going to be because you see your safeties now. With all these three and four wide, but you don't people don't realize safeties have to cover like corners. You have to play all that blitzing stuff and all the man stuff and all them spread teams. You got to go play. And that's what we did to South Carolina. We played nickel and dime with Joyner and uh, uh, Mike Harrison there at the game. We're playing four corners all the time. You know, you got him at safety. He's 193 pounds now. He still is faster, faster than he was. He hits. He tackles well. Can play in a deep part of the field, covering the ball in a half, and is an excellent tackler. Very good tackler. Terrence Brooks, same way, 195 pounds, 200 pounds. Uh, can run, can cover. Now when you're blitzing, you got guys that can play, that can cover you, just like their corners, can go back out and play corner. And, you know, those guys are becoming interchangeable in the way football is being played now, in space and the way they run and move those guys down to nickel and dime. You still got Terrence Parks and Nick will be out, and then, of course, Nick will be out for spring. But, you know, you got some big guys, but those guys are also very physical, can tackle. Their bodies are, are really good. I mean, so uh, I'm anxious to see that. I really am. I think it's, I think it's you know, something we talked about and we want to get a lot of our best players on the field and different packages in which we have. So and they can always go back to corner at times, too. So I, I think it's going uh, to be very good. You talked earlier about EJ on the community and mm -hmm. classroom. What do, you, how do you, what do you tell your guys? They're about to be the starter. What do you, how do you coach them up and how to handle themselves? And, uh, I understand. I, I put it in perspective for them. Okay, you can people probably one of the seven or eight most talked about, seen people in the state of Florida. The head coach at Florida State, Florida, Miami, the quarterback at Florida State, Florida, Miami, and the governor. <laughs> <laughs> Those seven people. How you measure? So you have to put it in perspective. How are people going to listen to you, see you? You're going to, you're going to be. You, people, people see you, they're going to know you, they're going to listen to everything you say, everything you do. So, understand something. Nothing's off the record, and there's no time that somebody's not watching you. So, understand the importance of, of, of the organization in which you represent. And now, if you're ready for that, we'll play. If you're not, then we'll play a different position, and you can be whatever you want to be, and you can't do that. That's just a responsibility that goes with the position. I mean, there's not an off time, and that goes, that goes with being who you are. When do you give them that thought? Give them hmm? No, nah, as, as I see that they're since they're ready for it. Early it wasn't, you know what I mean? He's kind of, I've had that one with him before though. You know what I mean? About a year ago and when he started getting in the line after his freshman year and he started get, becoming a player. But you know something? He's a guy you really didn't have to give that one to. He gets it. I mean, he really does. He, EJ's a guy, you know, you always say, what do you do when mom and dad's not watching? What do you do when the coach is not watching? I don't ever worry about it. I really don't. He, he's one of those few guys that I've ever been involved with that, you know, you never, I've ne I mean, you never have a moment where you worry about it. I just don't. He's got that, he understands it. I'm, I'm assuming that mom and dad are a pretty good job. Oh, his, his family's phenomenal. His mom and dad are phenomenal people. He's got a great, his sister, his grandmother, all his family. I mean, they're, they're, they're behind him in every facet. I mean, they, they stay involved, but not involved to where they, in, you know, interfere with the coach and just call and check on him and do things, but they're supporting him and there for him and everything he's ever done. And uh, his, his family is a, is a huge reason why he's where he's at. There's no doubt. Tim, well, I asked him in here a few minutes ago when he was growing up, who his idol was. He said, my dad. Uh, what kind of relationship do you have with his dad? Can you talk about that a little bit? His dad's, uh, he, him and his dad are very close. I mean, he, you know, like I say, he's named after his dad. And, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, a lot of respect. I mean, it, it's, it's much... You see a father-son relationship, but you almost see a best friend relationship. You know what I mean? Between them and, and the mutual respect they have for each other and the love. And his family is very close. And uh, to me, I think that's the greatest role model you can have is your dad. I mean, I think that's a great compliment to not only his dad, but to EJ. That most kids don't always, sometimes are mature enough to see that or realize that they have great parents. And sometimes take those people for granted. I call them the heroes of the world. You know, like that. My, my definition of a hero is the person who never asks for anything in return. He's there every time you need him. He's, he's there to answer the call. He's there to answer whatever you need. And those people are the people sometimes that you treat the worst, that are the closest to you, that you take for granted, and you look out there, they think there's something better. That EJ was smart enough to recognize at an early age 
that his family and how important them just being there, being good common folks, but being there and loving him and supporting him and doing everything they could do for him to be better. He was smart enough to recognize that, that that is a hero to him. And to me, it's just a compliment to him, too, that he can recognize that from his dad. they got a great relationship. They really do. He's pretty much your signature recruit here. I mean, he was your first big-name recruit. Yeah, that I went after since I got here, yes. And because when you meet him, the presence he has, what he carries about himself and all that, I mean, and I think he'll be very successful. I really do. Because I think he not only makes himself better, I think he makes the guys around him better. They feel comfortable. And confident in it. And I guess a lot to put on it, but we'll see. And he has to go out and perform and do it, but I don't expect him not to. What is uh, Jermaine's status for the spring? Uh, we're still evaluating that. He's doing very well. Been very pleased with his progress right now, the things he's doing off the field in the classroom. And right now, his progress is where he's at. So we'll, we're evaluating that daily right now, and uh, I'll make a decision on that here coming up. He may miss some, he may not. We'll have to wait and see. Christian Jones is a guy with an opportunity to kind of step up this spring. Just talk about how important it will be for him. I'll tell you what, now. Hey, somebody bless somebody in the body with ability. <laughs> he, he has a lot of size, potential, range, instincts, toughness. I mean, he, he's, I mean, he's a big body that can play in space. I mean, he can really be a good, you know, that's rare. For a guy to be that fit. I mean, he can walk up and play a tight end, as I say, and butt him right in the mouth and take on a tackle, but then go out there and cover a guy in the slot and bump him and reroute him and tackle him in space and, I think he has a chance to be a very, very good player. He and uh, we have a lot of those guys like Christian, I think, but he's so physical and big. Telvin's another guy like that, I think, has a great chance to be one of those guys that plays out there in space and just instinct. Those two guys, boy, they're just so instinctive the way they run and hit and run through you. They're very physical, all of them. Those two guys are, but Christian's going to be a very, very good player. I'm looking for him to have a great spring. What do you do with that position this spring? You've got some injuries there, you have to. Yeah, I mean, uh, not well, you got Jeff, you got Luck is the main guy that's out. I mean, you know, Nigel will be there, Vince is there, Telvin's there, Christian's there. Now, Holmes, which would, be, would have been more of a middle guy. You know, and the other guy who's had a good offseason is Nigel Terrell. Nigel Terrell has done some really good things, bulked himself up to about 223, 24 pounds. It really runs as athletic and be those guys out in space that, uh, that do some good things. So, I think we'll be all right there. And then you got Terrence Smith, who's here early. You know, he's, he'd already gained, they just got sick. He had the flu here just uh, over spring break and lost a couple pounds. But he had gained 17 pounds since he'd been here in two months and got faster. He got stronger and got in the weight room. So him him being out there, too, will give us a, a body in some of those. Some of those guys can go in. Because you, you understand now, you're playing nickel and dime a lot. So some of those wheels go in and play Mike. You put a secondary guy in and slot out there in those walkaway positions. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of there's a lot of people we can interchange in there and get some personnel matchups to do some things. And... Uh, but uh, that, that group ought to be good. Christian, Telvin, those guys out there in space would be really good. Well, How's the Juco defensive end you brought in? I know you're really high on. Uh, physical, strong, 258, 260. Uh, can run, can bend. Uh, workaholic. I mean, he's like Farron Crew. I, I tell you, I don't, I don't know if I've ever been around two junior college guys who come in as focused and driven and just from day one, just right in the mix of it, putting their nose down and working hard and whatever it takes and whether it's in the classroom, off the field, you know, in the weight room, just and work, yes sir, no sir, and just go at it. And uh, very good player. Can rush the passer, strong, can play the run. You know what I mean? I, I'm anxious to see how he does out there. Uh, you know, Tank is, is a great guy. Says yes sir, no sir, and what else can I do sir? He's one of those guys. I mean, that, that's the way he is. He's been no, I mean, no problems. Very driven and focused. How important is the return of Nigel Bradham to the linebacker core with his experience? And I, I think it is. And I tell you what, Nigel is really starting to emerge, starting to come out as a leader. He's starting to fill his shoes. Nigel's always a quiet guy, very good player, did all the things he did, but, you know, kept to himself a lot. Not because of arrogance or anything else, it's just his nature. You know what I'm saying? But lately, he's really starting to emerge and come out of that shell a little bit and lead and get on guys and do some things and, you know, start to affect the guys around him. And it's uh, been very good. And, uh, I think he's had a tremendous offseason. He's a lot more flexible, running better, changing direction better. You know, weight's probably 235, 237 is somewhere in there. But really running, of course, he's strong. If he never lifted, he, he don't need to lift anymore. I mean, he really I, I say that, he really doesn't. I mean, he's so strong, I mean, naturally. And just his flexibility and agility. And uh, But the leadership's what I've been the most pleased with in the offseason. Starting to really, still got a ways to go in that, but it's really starting to come out of his